All right, let's talk about a classic home lab problem. You've got this need for speed, right? We're talking 10 gigabit speeds between your servers, but you don't have a 10 gig switch. Well, don't worry. It turns out you might not even need one. So picture this. You've got these awesome, powerful Proxmox servers just itching to tear through tasks like live migrations and huge backups, but they're stuck talking to each other over a slow one gig, maybe a 2.5 gig link. Ugh, that bottleneck is real. And let's be honest, the price tag on a 10G switch, yeah, that'll make anyone pause. But what if, what if you could just bypass that expensive switch completely? That's what we're digging into today. We're gonna break down exactly how the home lab community is using some really clever software tricks to get that sweet, sweet 10G performance for, well, basically nothing. Okay, let's get right into it. With the first, and honestly the most elegant solution, it's called the bridge hack. And it's all about just rethinking what a switch even is. So the secret sauce for this whole thing, it's a core piece of Proxmox, and really Linux in general, called the Linux Bridge. Seriously, the best way to think about it is like a switch that's just pure software. It doesn't have physical ports. Instead, it has these virtual ports that you can plug your network cards into. So how do you actually do it? You're going to love this. It's so simple. Step one, you literally just run a network cable directly between the 10G ports on your two servers. Step two, on each machine, you go into the Proxmox network settings and you just add that 10G port to your main Linux bridge. You know, the one your other network card is probably already using. And that's it, seriously. And this is that big aha moment for so many people in the home lab world. You don't need to go out and buy a switch because your server is the switch. It's already acting as one through that software bridge. Your two nodes can now scream at each other at 10G speeds, and guess what? The rest of your network, all your other devices, they won't have a clue anything changed. But, okay, what if you want to get a little more granular, a little more advanced? Well, that brings us to our next method, the split path strategy. This is for when you want to dedicate that 10G link to very specific, very heavy-duty jobs. So here's the big trade-off. The bridge hack is super simple, right? It just creates one big happy network. The split path strategy though, that creates a separate private highway just for your servers. It isolates all that heavy traffic. We're talking backups, migrations, all that stuff, and puts it on the 10G link, leaving your main network totally free and clear. The price you pay for all that performance? A little bit more setup. So you're probably wondering, what does that extra setup actually look like? Well, it's probably less complicated than you're thinking. Okay. So you'll set up that direct 10G link on a totally different subnet, say something like 10.0.0. whatever. The real magic is this little line right here, up IP route add. All this command does is tell the server, hey, anytime you need to talk to the other server's 10G IP address, you have to use this 10G port, no exceptions. It's literally like creating a private expressway that only has two exits. Okay, look, these workarounds are awesome. They really are but they're not magic, so it's time for a little reality check. Let's talk about the gotchas and the trade-offs you're making here. With that split path method, you run into something I'll call the two subnet dilemma. If you've got a VM that needs to talk to your normal network and use that super fast link, well, you're probably gonna have to give it two virtual network cards, one for each subnet. It's not difficult, but it's an extra thing to manage, an extra thing to remember. And that kind of leads to the next point, the documentation burden. Look, as one home labber said, your setup can start to feel like you're running a small IT department. You're gonna want spreadsheets for your IPs, maybe some network maps, because trust me, when something inevitably breaks six months from now, you will be so glad you wrote it all down. But here it is, the single biggest risk with these setups. Because your servers are directly connected, you've created a single point of failure. If server A goes down for a reboot or if it just fails, then server B could lose its main connection to the rest of your network. That's a big deal. That said, for a lot of people, it's a calculated risk. And this quote from the community just sums up the mindset perfectly. It's about having a backup plan, right? Maybe you keep a cheap one gig switch in the room just in case you need to plug in and get to the console. The whole idea is you accept the risk for now, and if it ever becomes a real problem, well then you go buy the switch. All right, so if you're feeling a bit adventurous, you should know that these setups are really just the beginning. We're about to peek down a very, very deep rabbit hole. For like the ultimate level of control, you can actually spin up a whole virtual machine and have it act as a full-blown router. This little VM can manage all the traffic between your different networks, handle VLANs, create really sophisticated segmentation. I mean, we're talking enterprise-grade features right there in your lap. 
And then for the absolute performance junkies out there, there's something called DPDK. This is a whole set of libraries that lets your network card basically bypass the main operating system and talk directly to your apps. The speed boost is insane, but fair warning, this is not for the faint of heart. You should probably plan on spending a whole weekend just reading documentation. So after all of this, all these hacks, these workarounds, what's the big takeaway here? Because it's about a lot more than just saving a few hundred bucks on a Switch. And this really gets to the heart of it all. Yeah, of course, buying a 10G Switch would be easier, it'd be cleaner, but that's not always the point of having a home lab, is it? The real value is in the grind. It's in the process of really understanding the problem, trying out creative solutions, and learning exactly what makes your network tick. This quote from the community just says it all perfectly. The real satisfaction doesn't come from unboxing a shiny new piece of gear. It comes from building a solution yourself with the tools you've already got. And that really just leaves one final thought. When you have this mindset where you see limitations not as roadblocks but as creative challenges, the only real question is, what will you build next?